I'm very worried about Vera. Who is Vera, you may ask? Anybody, everybody here know who Vera is? The TV drama series. <laughs> the best police person in the world, Vera. No to compare. She is, in my opinion, the best TV detective in any police drama. Vera is forensic in her approach to detail, in catching the bad ones and keeping us all safe. In many detective sort of series, as you follow episode after episode, trying to determine who is the killer or who is the thief, and you're forensically examining everything and listening to every line and having discussions about was it him, is it her, I don't know. This is when you're watching multiples of TV police dramas. Who is the killer, who is the thief, and what happens? They invariably introduce in the last episode a new character that was never there before, who never appeared in any previous episodes, and then they just say, that's him, wrap it up. And that's it. And I think I'll never watch another scandal drama again after that, but I do. That really annoys me, having invested a lot of time and my own forensic mind games. I'm only sure from watching them of making a wall in the kitchen. Only a spell at one back. You know with all the names, pictures, times, dates, and evidence for them. Murder man, as they're called in TV drama, used in most thrillers, and all the pieces are attached with string as the cops get to know new evidence that connects the piece each to the other. However, I'm disappointed to hear this might only be in TV drums and that police in actual fact use evidence books and sit around the table. But then that wouldn't make good TV. They are also used in drama to display obsessional interests including those of maybe a delusional individual. Picture, if you will, young woman meets handsome young man in a bar, have a few drinks, and then he says, would you like coffee in my place? They go back to his place for coffee, and she goes looking for the bathroom, and goes into the wrong room by mistake, and wants to see a wall with pictures of her, multiple pictures of her. How many have seen a drama with that in? Loads, or is it only me? No. <laughs> Loads of pictures of her. She tries to escape and the door is locked. And very, very frequent, very frequent um, cameo used in TV drama. I should be writing this. It always works and it always gives dramatic tension. However, back to Vera. Vera Stanhope is one of the best detective series in my opinion. Vera is a detective chief inspector, played by the wonderful actor Brenda Blether. And good news for you all, there will be a 2024 series that they're working on at present. But I started out by saying, I'm worried about Vera. And here's why I'm worried about Vera. As well as having, having the best evidence for her, Vera disarms, disarms people by always calling them love, or more often than not, pet. They are our pet. It's funny you should say that, pet, that you were there that night, because the CCTV shows you went pet. And that's how she resigns the bad lot. Which I like 
And it's very jolly. Anyone who speaks to Newcastle will hear Pet used a lot in Newcastle. Well, however, a North East University is asking their staff to stop using the jolly term of a German pet. Newcastle University suggests the avoidance of patronising and gender terms such as girls, ladies and pet. Now I understand, I can understand in part some of that and context is everything. In order to have inclusive language. But the problem with Vera, she calls everyone pet. Make us a cup of tea, Kelly, pet. All the other policemen are called pet as well. Her use, and also, her use of pet is gender neutral. Everybody's called pet. And the only problem is, when universities or other academic institutions make a public pronouncement, it's not long before it's impacting on society as a whole. Now, I perused scripture recently, says he, um, to see if Jesus used affectionate terms to others. I don't think, I didn't see anywhere that he referred to anyone as pet. But he did use sort of nicknames. When he said, Peter, you are the rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So off you go, Rocky. <laughs> he called John the Beloved, Nathaniel the one without God. So he actually did, a bit like the French, he had nicknames for his followers, his apostles and other followers. And these were his friends, so he was affectionate too. Jesus was very big into friendship. And he said, no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. But remember, and we always have to remember this, that very little of what Jesus said was written down. And as we know, Jesus didn't leave any written text of his own. He was spoken about, not what he wrote down himself. I believe the term pet may have been around since the 1500s and used for a child and much later on than used for an animal. It's of Scottish origin and Northern English origin but also has some roots here in Ireland and may have, may have come from the shortening of peckets to pet and is used in, still in Ireland, you will hear people using the term pet. Vera is a great creation by one of the best novelists, crime novelists in Britain, Anne Cleves. Who, by the way, also gave us Jimmy Perez of Shepherd, another great series. And Jimmy is described by Anne Cleves as tactile, depressive, whereas Vera is abrasive, but never heartless, and always compassionate. The use of affectionate terms will be debated. And on a serious note, of course, it has to be debatable because there are terms you wouldn't use in the workplace or in common now uh, because they could be considered uh, diminishing and they could cause hurt. So that's on a serious note. I'm not being too serious today, as you may have noticed. Because some Sundays I'm incredibly serious and I upset myself. <laughs> now the one that I never understand is the Scots' use of power. And I'm not a, I don't know the 
the Scots that level, a recent expedition, and it was an expedition, to Edinburgh to do a wedding. And I felt that when Scots called you Pam, it wasn't affectionate. <laughs> Are you all right there, Pat? Or when I got on a bus and the driver said to me, Have you got the right mind, Pat? I thought, I don't feel I'm getting anything here. <coughs> so, not quite as nice as the Jordy pet. Give me pet any day than the Scottish pal. The Scots might tell you different. The other one that has got into our language is mate. And that came from London. I remember in London, all right, mate. Cheers, mate. Point a minute, mate. And now it's everywhere. My brother, I was sitting in a yacht club in Dundee, no, a yacht club in Dundee. Now there's nothing more posher in the world than a yacht club in Dundee. And my brother calls the waiter mate. I said, Mormons, you can't do that in Dunbarry. Just can't do that. You could be sent away. But mate is practiced everywhere. You'll hear it in Belfast a lot now, mate. And there is, of course, the African American, American brother or bro. Lots of people use that. And they use it on social media, bro. I don't use it. It's a bit too, a bit too young for me, I think. But another one that's creeping in, watch it, it'll soon see it, is Macara. Do people know what Macara means? Well, you better know what it means, Monica. It's Irish for my friend. And you're going to hear, now especially after Nika, you're going to hear Macara. People say, people address each other, now maybe not as bro anymore, but Macara, my friend. How you got Macara? Buddy in Dublin. All right, buddy. But well, Macara is slowly creeping into everyday speech. But whatever happens with pet names, as we heard from the French, who seem to be the masters of them, and Jesus, who in his own way used affectionate terms, there is a sort of there is a sort of symmetry in how we live, live our lives and pet names for each other. As long as they're never hurtful, as long as they're never diminishing or accusatory. Pet names can endear, can indeed add to an endearing relationship to a good friend. But whatever happens, my prayer today is that Anne Cleves and ITV don't listen to Newcastle University and that Vera continues to say, you are my pet. Amen. <laughs>